Hey everybody, Jeff Schneider here. In today's video, we're gonna talk about cadences and how to use cadences to enhance any chord progression, especially a simple one. We're gonna workshop Amazing Grace in the key of F major today and use cadences to enhance it, to make it sound way hipper than it would if you just used the basic one, four, and five chords. So I think we're just gonna tackle the first phrase today. It's gonna to sound like this with the most basic of chords. So right there, all we have are the one and four chords going back and forth. Now, before we go any further, I want to explain quickly what a cadence is. Basically, I think of it like transitions and arrivals. So you have some chords that feel like they're transitioning, and then you have some chords that feel like you're arriving somewhere. So the most basic cadence is a five chord going to a one chord, this sound right here. That's basically what Western music is built on. You have the tension, that's the transition chord, resolving to the one, five going to one. But there are other cadences that are just as popular. You may have heard of the two, five, one, the four, five, one, maybe the three, six, two, five, one, Many different variations, but they all have that feeling of transition to arrival. And we're going to utilize those types of chords, those types of cadences, to enhance a simple song like Amazing Grace. So for my first harmonic embellishment, I'm going to get into that 4 chord by way of a 5 of 4. So instead of just playing F just before the 4, I'm going to play F7, which is the secondary dominant going to the 4 chord. Check this out. So that chord right there, that was an F9. That E flat right there is coming from the B flat scale. And it resolves really nicely into the B flat major. So that's a pretty classic secondary dominant, five of four. But we can build on that chord progression even more so. Let's now do a two, five, one into that four chord. So that's the two, five, one right there. Two, five, one. But the one is really a four chord in the key of F. So don't get confused there. When I say one, I'm just using that in the context of this micro two, five, one. But in the grand scheme of things, this chord right here, the B flat, is the four in the key of F major. But we are approaching it via this two, five, one like shape. And the actual voicings that I'm using are a very basic C minor 7, that's the 2 chord. And here I'm doing an F9 with a sharp 5, resolving to a regular old B flat major. So for this next example, I'm going to use the 2 5 1 again, but this time in a place you might not expect. I'm actually going to start with that 2 5 1 right from the very beginning. Instead of starting on the 1 chord, I'm going to start on the 2 chord. Check this out. There's the two, five, to the one. A basic two chord there, one, five, three, and seven. This is more of a five sus with the seven and the 13. I have one, five, seven, one. There's that sus four and the 13 on top. So the reason for this is because the melody has the F in it, so I want to keep that. Uh, I want to keep that F in the voicing rather than having that E, because that's going to clash. Check this out. That doesn't sound that great. So, and then resolving to the one just as before. Uh, this time I have the major seven and the nine, and then I can continue on with that five seven chord, uh, the five seven of four. So a lot of harmonic activity at this point, but it's all really just a two, five, one, and then a five of four. Here it is all together. And 
now I'll do it with the 2-5-1 right back to back with the other 2-5-1. So this time I'm going to play the 2-5-1 up front again, but I'm going to compress the rhythm of the harmony so that it's much faster. Check this out. I'm going to play the roots and the melody only for the first time. So you can hear this is the very, very beginning of the melody, the pickup, and now here's with the chords. 2-5-1. That's a G minor 11, followed by a C sus or a C7 sus. Again, there's an F in the melody, so I want to have a suspended 4 on that 5 chord. And then resolving to the 1. This is an F add 9. And then I can follow that up with another 2 5 1, like I just did. So I'm going to do a tritone substitution variation on the one I just showed you. So instead of 2, 5, I'm going to do the tritone away from this 5 chord, which is going to be a G flat, and I'm going to end up playing G flat major 7 because I have an F in the melody, and then resolving down to F. Check this one out. That's really nice. I can actually start right on the G flat major seven and skip the G minor seven altogether. So that sounds like a really different kind of chord progression right there, but you understand where it's coming from now. It's just a five going to a one basically, but instead of the five, I'm doing the tritone away. So now you see what I was saying before about how important that five one relationship is. This basic cadence. A five going to one can be applied in so many different situations. All right, guys, I'm gonna show you one more. This one, I'm going to extend that two, five, one backwards into a three, six, two, five, one. And when I say backwards, what I mean is I'm, I'm basically working my way back uh, in fourths or fifths, however you wanna think about it. So if we're going to B flat, that's our arrival point, the transition chords to get there, instead of just two, five, one to get there, I'm gonna do three, six, two, five, one. And if I stack those like so, you'll see I'm going up and forth. So that's why that circle of fifths or circle of fourths is so important. So let's try this chord progression out. We're landing on the B flat. We're gonna aim towards that four chord, but we're going to get there by way of a D to a G to a C to an F to a B flat. Okay, check this out. So that little bit at the end I might talk about in a later video because this is getting long already. So let me break down that 36251 going to four and then we'll call it for today. All right, so we have basic one chord up front and then immediately I'm gonna jump into the D minor. And here I have a D minor, I've got the 11 in there as well. So this is the six chord, but this is more of a five of two of four. Now that's a lot of numbers right there, but let me break it down for you. So again, the basic chord progression is starting on the D minor. This is a G7. Now G7 is the five of C. It's the five of C minor, which is gonna be the next chord. So. Again, I like to think of it as the five of two, and when I say two, I'm referring to the two of four. Okay, let's continue to play. D minor 11, G7, and this right here, it's still G7, I'm just adding in some fancy stuff. This is including the, uh, like the sharp 11 and the 13 resolving to the melody F there, and then D is, of course, the fifth of G7, followed by, where am I? Okay, so here's the C minor seven, and I have the 13 on top to accommodate the melody. 
Last but not least, we have the F7. And here I have the nine on top in the melody. There's our sharp five like we had before. And finally, the B flat major nine in this case. One, three, seven, one, nine, five. So before we close this one out, I do wanna thank Storyblocks Audio for sponsoring this video. You know, for a lot of the videos I make, whether it's music education videos or home movies or vlogs or whatever, I try to use my own music when possible, but whenever I'm having trouble finding something that fits the scene, I'm always going to Storyblocks Audio to look through their library to find music and sound effects and all kinds of stuff to make my videos better. There was actually a video I put together for a client last year and there was a scene in there that really required some sort of folky acoustic guitar. I really needed this finger picking style that I was just not going to be able to crank out in the time that I had available. So like I said, I went to the Storyblocks audio library and I found a great track and it really made the scene. It brought everything together. So if you guys are interested, I highly recommend checking out Storyblocks Audio. With your membership, you'll get unlimited downloads from studio quality audio clips, loops, music tracks, sound effects, and it's all royalty free content so you can use it for commercial and personal projects. And if you've checked them out before, it's always worth going back to take another look because they are regularly updating the catalog so there's always something fresh to download. To learn more about all that and more, go ahead and click the link in my description below. And if you'd like to see a follow-up video for additional chord variations on Amazing Grace, definitely let me know in the comments. And that's about it. So thanks, everybody, for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.